Welcome to episode one of CSS and JS. And I don't mean that like CSS in JS, although it kind of is in what we're doing. I mean it as like apostrophe N, like this is CSS and JS. We're gonna be studying them both simultaneously today. And we're gonna do that by recreating what CSS selectors are doing in functional programming JavaScript. In CSS, we say class name, and then we, iter we put some styles in a block. And in JavaScript, what we're going to do is we're going to query selector all. We're going to find all the matches in the DOM for a given uh, selector, iterate over each of them, and extend their style object with some new styles, essentially doing what CSS is doing in a tiny little succinct block in a tiny little succinct functional programming chain. <laughs> I hope you're excited for this because I'm super, uh, super into it. It's been really fun. And so what I mean is our task today is these items on the left, we want those to match uh, the item on the right. So the item on the left is currently being styled with CSS and the item on the right needs to be styled with JavaScript. And if we look really quick in our HTML, we have this control element here. That's our styled element with CSS and our experimental element here that's being, uh, it's not styled yet. We have an emoji class name on there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that because I'm going to be using it in a second. And if we look at our CSS, it's nothing crazy here. We have a single class selector and a single block of styles. Our goal by the end of this video is to write some JavaScript that is a uh, functional programming style. So right, so we're gonna use map filter reduce and for each and things like that. And we wanna make the item on the right look like the item on the left. Hey, one of my favorite things is working right here live in the DevTools console, cause it feels a lot like a REPL. All right, so let's really quick over here in our JavaScript, let's talk about what the CSS is doing and then we'll recreate that. So first we need to grab nodes uh, right, that's what control is doing. It's just very succinctly grabbing all elements that have the class name control. Then we need to iterate, and then we need to extend the uh, extend styles. Great. So the way that we're going to do that in um, in this project today is we're basically going to use document query selector all. So doc, uh, query selector all. We're going to say for each, and inside of here. Uh, we're going to say object uh, object dot assign style with new styles. Okay, so that's pseudocode. And here, let me just crunch up this HTML. We don't really need that as much anymore. Pull that like right about here. And get our JavaScript uh, back out into here. Right. So this is pseudocode. We want to grab the nodes, iterate, and extend the styles. Well, let's do that right here in the REPL, right? Because why can't I grab the nodes, iterate over them, and style them right here without even writing in a file? I can write it right here in the console here. We got document .query selector all. So our first task was to target the class of nerd emoji. So look at that. As I type that command right here into the console, we get eager evaluation. It says this is a node list at the end of that. If I hit enter, it will actually go fetch it and print the whole object and I can dig into the node list as I please. Very neat. Okay, so that's step one of our task was to simulate the selector was grab all the nodes that match. Now in this lesson one, it should be simple. So our selector is very basic that we're emulating. Uh, trust me, uh, level two gets a lot more complex. But anyway, Let's keep it simple for the beginning here. We've got query selector all, there's our node list. We need to iterate. So we have for each is our great way of iterating here. Let's say for each node, let's just say node.style.color is equal to hot pink. Because uh, this is just a quick little test. If I hit enter, we have hot pink text. Test number two is I actually want to extend the style node or the style property of the node. So instead of saying node.style.color, I'm gonna destructure style right off of the node in the, the callback. And in here, instead of saying style.color, I'm gonna say object.assign. So I'm gonna assign that style a new object. And inside of here, uh, I'm gonna say color equals, let's just say white. And there we have it. So if I expand this out a little bit, let me just, Hit enter here, hit enter here, right? I can tab indent in here a little bit. Okay, so what do we have here? We have our, our fetch, we have our iteration, and we have our assign. I'm just gonna go ahead and snag this right off of here because we are ready to go over here. So if we say document.query selector all, 
we have our for each, we have our object dot assign, and what I'm going to do is basically break out uh, this object. There we go. And we're going to kind of fill it out. So I'm going to say font family. Oh, and notice that we need to use a key. We don't need to, but I'm going to opt into using the object key notation, and that's this um, camel cased font family. I could have written font family in a in a string, but I don't know. I'm just trying to avoid strings right now because I'm in JavaScript land. So let me stick with his uh, objects as much as I can. So our font family is sans serif. <laughs> Have our box shadow and in here I am just going to paste that bad chicken like this okay if I save let's go back over here and we are done look at that so our item on the right matches our item on the left it's got its blue hues to it because that was a little type of flare I wanted to add in there and if we come back to our code here and scroll over let me just add a couple of line breaks up here because look at that I think that is extremely interesting, right? We have a uh, control. So if we just to reiterate over here on our CSS, we have a control class, which is finding every match. It's a collection for each item in that collection. It's going to extend the styles of those nodes with the properties and values that are being specified inside the code block, all right? Okay, now what do we have over here? We have go get all the items that match this thing. So we have a class, we have a collection, we're iterating over each item in the collection, and we're extending those styles with a new set of styles inside this block. We are essentially doing the same thing CSS is doing in our JavaScript. Now, I wanna do one little twist, and it's not even a twist, it's just I'm gonna format this a little bit and prepare us for our future task in level two. And to do that, I'm just gonna pop up here, and I wanna say const experiments, it's usually a good idea to stash your, your DOM selectors. So here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prepare us for functional programming by spreading that node list into an array. And I'm gonna use that here, which means I can shorten this up and I can shorten this up and essentially do that. Okay, here, new line. Now we have our one-to-one -one still back and forth. Everything's still good. Let's go back to here to make sure it's all good. Everything is all good. Now I want to I want to show one thing before we're done here. First one is, and this is like a little bit of that conversion that I did, because we can do it right here live in the REPL and see what is it that 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 spread operator did on our node list. Okay, we have our document got query selector all. This is what we originally fetched, and if we look on here, we have for each, which is what we used, but we don't have map, we don't have flat map, and we don't have reduce. It's going to be annoying in the way that we want to work in our functional programming style. We can't really chain and loop and do all these um, pure function and, and just immutable uh, activities or immutable functions on these nodes unless they have those uh, available. So the, the fast way to do that is you can either say array.from and pass in your node list, which will convert the node list into an array, or you can say spread every item in that into a new one. And you can see down below, we still have our array. This time it doesn't say node list. And we can check to see if it has map <gasps> and flat map and reduce. It's got all of our good stuff on there. So that is what we did, is we essentially converted a node list into an array so that we had additional properties on it that we could use. And that concludes our lesson one. I think this is particularly interesting. I've learned a whole bunch about just the way that I think about CSS. I, I, before I had done this, uh, done this practice, I had not even a single time considered the fact that every time I write a CSS selector, it's likely against a collection. It's small, that's a small thing, but I, don't, I, I just never really thought about my CSS that way, that writing a, a selector is very much like identifying a filtered set of a collection, right? You have your DOM, you have every element in the page, and a selector says, now I want this filtered set. And so this is where we're getting at, right? I just used the word filter. Uh, earlier, I used the word map. That's kind of what we're doing here with uh, for each, but we're not gonna use map yet. What we're discovering is that the same sort of verbiage that happens 
in functional programming can be found with inside of CSS if you're looking with the right type of eye. So that's what we're going to be doing in this. We're going to be continuing to look at CSS through a functional programming lens, lens and also looking at functional programming through a CSS lens to find the little nuggets that are in between that are just unique, unique little datums for our brain. So I hope lesson one was really interesting. I hope that uh, I set up a strong foundation and then lesson two keeps you even more engaged. <sighs> Follow along, comment, tell me what you think, try it yourself, fork the code, I'll have it in a GitHub repo, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, y'all.